Game Theory and Evolution, The Optimization of Life Chapter 1, Evolution, or Why We Have Legs and Not Fins Okay, so before I take a look at how um, game theory is able to simulate evolution in real life, let's first figure out what evolution is. So evolution is a change in characteristics of a species over time. Take, for example, the Galapagos finches. They were originally from the same species, but because of separation due to geographical boundaries, um, some began to grow short and strong beaks, whereas others slim and slender ones in response to their environment. So this is an example of evolution in action. Um, evolution, the idea of evolution first began with Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in the 19th century with his theory of the transmutation of species and theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics. So in this, he argued that the reason we saw changes in the appearances of species over time was because organisms could pass down physical traits that they acquired through overuse to their offspring. However, Charles Darwin um, disproved this theory later on with his publication of The Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection in 1859. In this, he stated that all species arose and developed through the natural selection of inherited variation that increased that organism's ability to survive. So unlike Lamarck, who believed in acquired characteristics, Darwin argued there was changes in the genetic makeup that was passed down from offspring, uh, from parent to offspring. So now let's take a look at the mechanics of evolution. So there wouldn't be evolution without genetic variation, and genetic variation is caused by mutations. Mutations are random changes in organisms' DNA that give rise to new phenotypes. However, not every mutation leads to evolution. Some cripple the organism, some kill the organism, and some do nothing at all. And mutations are an essential part of evolution because this is what natural selection works and thrives on. So now let's take a look at natural selection. Natural selection is essentially the process in which evolution uses to make a new species. So natural selection first begins by a struggle for existence. There must be a selective pressure, uh, which include but are not limited to lack of food, habitat, mates, extreme changes in temperature, weather, or geographical location, as well as biological factors such as predators and pathogens that limit the survival of a certain species. Uh, with this said, uh, COVID-19 is an example of a selective pressure. Now, because of this struggle for existence, certain mutations become adaptations, and the, they become traits that help organisms under these new circumstances survive better. And because they can survive better, they can pass down their traits to their offspring. And this will lead to evolution, wherein over time, that trait becomes more and more numerous in the gene pool, eventually leading to the creation of a new species with a new phenotype. So that is evolution in a nutshell. Chapter 2, Game Theory, or the explanation of everyone's favorite social interaction theory. Given a game where two players can choose to either cooperate where they share a small reward, or cheat where they reap the entire reward while the other player gets nothing or a penalty, we can ask what the optimal strategy would be. Now, if the game is only played once, exploiting your opponent makes more sense, as there's no actual strategy here, just picking uh, either to cheat or cooperate, and cheating will, will always uh, reap a, a better reward, and cooperating can leave you vulnerable to getting exploited. However, if the game is repeated, then the other player will remember and respond to your past actions, and these are how so social strategies can develop. Repeated interactions are necessary for trust to evolve, so several individuals slash species living in a shared ecosystem can be forced to interact and develop these complex social behaviors and strategies based on how much they trust the others in their society, or at least in their ecosystem. We can analyze these different types of games using different diagrams such as payoff tables in the bottom and decision trees on the right. The games themselves can either be zero-sum games, where one individual's gain is another's loss, or non-zero-sum games, where both of the players can lose, win, or take advantage of the other. Now, in zero-sum game situations, there's almost no way for both players to gain any, to reap benefit at the same time, so it's very difficult for trust to evolve, as exploitation will always take advantage over cooperation. But in non-zero games, in non-zero-sum games, 
It is possible for all individuals to reach win-win situations or to at least avoid lose-lose ones. That's why, and especially in our current in our modern world, uh, these situations are, are especially necessary for trust to evolve. A common social strategy used is the tit-for-tat method, wherein a player starts out by cooperating with others, but for every move afterwards, he will copy the other's previous move. If another player cooperates, the copycat will as well. If another player cheats or exploits, the copycat will follow them there as well. In repeated games, this strategy, also known as copycat or live and let live, has been a golden rule for social interaction. Chapter 3, Game Theory and Evolution, or Where We've Been Going with Our Inane Ramblings. By definition, evolutionary game theory is the application of classical game theory to model Darwinian competition. In evolutionary game theory, the energy spent by the organism is the cost and the resources gained are the benefits. In this context, the strategies represent the different phenotypes the organism possesses, while the payoff can be seen as Darwinian fitness or measure of reproductive success. It has helped explain the tendency for altruism to win in Darwinian evolutionary models. By looking over here at this graph, we can see that altruism, while negative for the donor, benefits the recipient. Cooperation benefits both parties, selfishness benefits only the donor, and spite benefits no parties. In terms of the machinations of this, game theorists study evolutionary dynamics through replicator equations that display the growth rate of organisms using a certain strategy, which is the average between the average payoff and payoff of the entire population. These equations assume infinite populations, continuous time, continuous mixing, and that strategies breed true. The evolutionarily stable strategy is a strategy which, if adopted by a population, cannot be invaded by any competing alternate strategy. This is a great example of game theory in action. So as you can see here, uh, we have an example of the hawk versus the dove. So if we take into account the following scenario, there are two kinds of birds, the hawk, an aggressive predator, and a dove, a passive prey species. And there, there are four interactions that are possible. So if, it, if a hawk meets a dove, it obtains all the resources. If the hawk meets a hawk, it wins half the time and loses the other half. And if a dove meets a hawk, it backs off, it doesn't win anything. If a dove meets a dove, both share the resources equally. So, in the picture, it's a symbol matrix that really represents the probability of the interactions that are possible between the two species. So, in the end, if the cost of losing is greater than the prize of winning, which is what happens in the real world, um, this results in a mix of two strategies, where the population of hawks is the resource divided by the cost. This, also, this model also explains why most animals have ritual fighting behaviors rather than full-on combat. The evolutionary stable strategy for the two populations are 20% hawks and 80% doves. So, how is this applied to computer science? So. When we create a model, such as the hawk and dove model, where a cost and a resource quantity is provided, we can actually develop a simple program to simulate and determine the potential outcome of repeated interaction. And while we are ensuring the limitations discussed earlier are remembered, so this way we can help determine something called an evolutionary stable strategy. So in this matrix here, you can see the cross of the dove and hawk fitness overall. And also, we can see how they intersect. And through this, we can determine the evolutionary stable strategy that we may apply in the real world. So in the end, as the field continues to evolve and change over time, Human understanding of evolution and other natural processes can be further supported through the use of mathematical models and computer science based on a risk and reward scenario.
And with this understanding, humans can learn how to better preserve the environment and its species from extinction. Furthermore, evolution plays a large role in the current pandemic, and game theory is one way to lead researchers to, complete, to possibly completely eradicate viruses that can cause a lot of harm to our societies. Thank you. Thank you.